Hey skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. I'm Bob, how's it going? Bob and I are here today to talk about the new 2024 Rossignol Forza 60. Yeah. It's a fun one. Yep, we did a nice discussion on this 70 earlier this winter and mm -hmm. uh, kind of moving right along the line to the 60. Yeah, so when we first talked about it earlier in the winter, like Bob is, is alluding to, um, we kind of introduced the whole line in general and then focused like the second half of the video as like a 70 specific yep. review. So if you watch that, you're probably aware of this new ski. Um, and just as kind of a summary, uh, I like the kind of direction and theme behind this new line. Yeah, and it's not like this is new. A lot of people either think that this is replacing Hero Elite, which it's not. No. This is taking over for... Um, React? React, thank right. you, sorry. Um, as more of that high-end recreational carving And scheme. a little wider. A little wider, yep, a little yep. bit more friendly. Yep. Uh, but still super high performance. Yeah, and I find that it, it feels like it's following this trend or this resurgence of carving enthusiasm. Totally. People are like, carving is yep. fun, and you're seeing it, you know, in skis like Line Blade, like yep. a company like Line making a ski like the Blade or the Black Crows Miris Core. Like, there is this just renewed excitement about carving. Yeah, and we had a nice conversation with the people at Rosignol about this and, yeah. you know, definitely trying to take that more European model and instilling it into North American markets. Yep. And I think that makes a lot of sense, and we've said it countless times. There are more days for us right. throughout the course of a Vermont ski season where this ski is far more applicable right. than even like a Kendo 88. You know, like, like we're not even talking mid-90s, but even like 88 to 90. Sure. Yeah. Um, so having something that's, that's appropriate for your, the conditions and terrain that you ski more often is just a huge benefit. Yep. Um, and kind of one of the, the last things I want to say about this line in general is I like that Rosgnall is, they're not, they're not positioning these skis as like something that you're going to go win a race with. Sure. Or like fastest yep. or stiffest. They're really focusing on the, the feel that they give you and kind of the, the skier's reaction and that mm -hmm. like, that, super rewarding feeling of generating lateral acceler acceleration and yeah. g-forces and stuff like that um, and then we see a little bit contrary to that the numbers in the skis uh, which i also really like but it is a little bit more technical um, rather than a feeling uh, is like the degree of edge angle that you're supposedly yeah. able to achieve with the ski yeah and we can talk more about this later when we get to performance because i kind of i felt like i went on a journey with this forza 60 and ultimately landed on like oh it likes a 60 degree right. edge angle yep and i thought that was very cool oh totally so anything else you want to add before we get into construction and shape and details and that kind of stuff no there's plenty to get to with construction so i yeah. think we can get right to it there yeah so here's the ski bob yeah if you want to take us through construction and, and then maybe we can touch on just the slight difference between this and 70. yeah i feel like one of the last times i was up here talking about a ski it had a it had a poplar wood core and that was it and that was really easy to talk about yeah, with construction. A lot and, more going on. In yeah, here. It, you know, in an effort to make a ski kind of feel like it's well balanced and sophisticated and poised, that's when you kind of have to add in these extra materials and take that next level of engineering. Yep. Uh, and so Rosignol kind of did that with uh, this with this Forza ski. Uh, they still do start with that poplar wood core. They do add their line control technology through the center of it. So we've dealt with line control technology for a while. Really helps with the counter flexing of the ski and helps keep it nice and stable and smooth. Uh, they have some other stuff in here as well. Their V-shaped Titano laminate, uh, which also mirrors that line control technology. And gives you this little, little amount of depth, yeah. 3D look to the finish. And as we've said before, anytime that metal or other materials are placed in that three-dimensional format, it really stiffens them up. Yep. So that, I mean, you were flexing them before. Yeah, like, it's a stiff ski. It's a stiff ski for, for sure. Especially like, you know, maybe jumping ahead a little bit here, but 899 system ski and yep. binding. Like we're not in like 
It's not like a thirteen hundred dollar carving ski with a right. binding on it. Where like, yeah, you expect something like that, like a a hero elite or a hero athlete GS. Right. Like, yeah, that's gonna be stiff. But I, I think this is surprisingly stiff. Yeah. So those two things: line control, V tightenal, and then they also use their carbon alloy matrix. So vertical stringers of fiberglass and then uh, cross-hatch stringers of carbon and basalt. So we have these extra materials in here as well uh, to help stiffen the ski both longitudinally as well as torsionally. Uh, another thing they put in here is their reinforced torsion tip technology. Actually works, a, like I think it makes more sense in the 70 than the 60. What it does is anytime that there's more of an oversized shape in the shovel, uh, adds more structural material to it in order to make it, you know, get up on edge. You had mentioned line blade, uh, great cross comparison there, sure. how they use their gas pedal metal in yeah, order to access yeah, yeah, that torsional uh, stiffness necessary to get the ski up on edge. Yep. So if you want to hit that 60 degree, that 70 degree yeah, carve. You need, you need some torsional stiffness. Yep, you need some torsional stiffness. So that goes, that goes right in there. Uh, Gosh, I think that might be it. It's all of those things combined. We do get tightenal beam in here as well, yep. uh, as opposed to full tightenal. Uh, that's one of the main construction differences between the 60 and the 70. Which seems minor. Yeah, especially given the fact that they have another metal application. Right, there's like a yeah. lot more going on in here than, you know, if it was only relying on traditional horizontal yeah. metal laminates and you like took some of that out, I right. think it would, it would change as the ski a little bit more than the situation that we have going on here. Yeah, but all of those things combined with this sandwich sidewall construction really gives it that kind of race inspiration, but yeah. certainly with a more friendly shape. Yeah, race inspired for yeah. sure. Like you, when you look at it and hold it, like even just the finish through the tip here, yeah. like that looks looks like it's inspired by race ski construction. Um, same binding, Bob? Yeah, this SPX-12, this connect system on both skis. Yep. Um, you know, nice. It gives a really high stand height. It does, which uh, like acts like a plate. Kinda. Yeah, and it's, no. It's sweet. If you're generating a high edge angle, yep. picking yourself up off the ground a little bit is going to help just less booting out and yeah, I mean, you're leverage. stacked right up there. I yeah. really like it for skis like this, especially that intention of totally having a carving ski. Well, it's amazing. Like when we have to ski like that exact binding system as yep. a demo on like a, let's say a Black Ops 98. Right. It's like, this is annoying. And then you put it <laughs> yeah. on this ski and it's like, oh, this is sweet. This right. is like the best binding system you could ever ask for no, on it this makes ski. No, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so touch on shape a little bit here and then uh, move right into performance, which I think is the definitely the most exciting part of this conversation. Um, obviously, we're going to have mostly camber in this ski. It is 7,500 foot. I guess I'll add that into the, the shape conversation. So with a ski that width, you're not expecting too much rocker out yeah. of it. There is a little bit of tip rocker in this ski, um, which I think helps when you get into turn initiation and stuff like that, just how smooth the ski feels, roll it on edge and it's gonna help you kinda hook right up and head into that turn. Um, slight difference in turn radius between that ski that you're holding and this ski. So here I've got a 13 meter turn radius and I believe you've got a 14 meter turn radius over there. Yeah, Although not on this length. That length is a bit yeah. shorter, but on the comparable length, you would yeah. have one extra meter in turn radius. Um, and then really the biggest difference or the, the biggest talking point, in my opinion, in shape is the difference in this tip. Yeah. So that was probably the first thing we noticed when Rosignol first showed us that Forza 70 is like, whoa, look at that extended side cut. Yeah. And it really felt borrowed or kind of inspired from like the Experience 86 Ti or any of the Experience skiers because they have... Yeah. very similar shape where the side cut extends really forever until the very end of the ski, but it's matched with a little bit more rocker and those experienced skis. And they basically kind of took that concept and applied it here, or at least to the 70. But in this 60, you get, I mean, it's not a ton of early taper, but compared to that, it's considerably more early taper. These tip protectors touch. 
right. when you put it together on that's the wall. A, yeah, that's a great visual. Yeah, that's how, that's what I noticed just before filming when you yeah. line the tails up and then put the tips together. Like these touch at the very ends and yep. those have a little bit of give to them. And uh, we're a little wider underfoot over there. I don't know if I mentioned how wide that 70 is, but yeah. I know we're what, one millimeter narrower over here or are we up to 78 This there? one's 78 in the comparable length. Yeah, so three millimeters yeah. narrower here in the 60 compared to the 70. Yep. And I think that about covers it for shape. There's nothing crazy going on here in shape. No, tails are about the same, very yeah. precise, very reactive. Yeah. You know, we, we, I would compare them to something like a head super shape in terms of yep. just the very flared out, non-tapered tail shape. Yep. It's gonna hold you in the turn. Um, so moving right along to performance now, uh, we got on these a handful of times throughout the season. Um, I was really happy and, and thank you to Rossignol specifically for actually sending this, this specific pair right, right here out because I wanted to ski it more. Um, but before we get to that, I feel like I do have a fun story to tell on kind of the later testing that we did on this ski at Stowe. But Bob, what was your kind of initial reaction to this ski? We got on it down in Pico and, yep. and skied it kind of back to back with this 70. So what'd you think? Uh, you know, first of all, it's a, that is short for me. Like sure. I would opt for the 179. Yep. Um, knowing that, you know, whenever I get on something that's shorter than what I should be on, I kind of, I pretend like I'm smaller. Sure. <laughs> or at least try to. Um, so you start to try to access that side cut and you can, you can get it. It's really, really easy to achieve the intended edge angle yep. at that turn shape where I found that this ski really, really started to kind of step up the liveliness is when you broke shorter than the side cut rather than longer. So I really appreciate it. If you were trying to make a shorter turn yep. than side cut indicates. Correct. Yeah, I like it. So really like jamming on the ski, yeah. using the side cut, using yeah. the camber underfoot, getting that energy out of the ski, really excellent feedback, great rebound, yeah. easy initiation, yeah. you know, definitely a different sense than the 70. It the, is, isn't the it? The 70 wants you to, to roll into it and, and keep pushing. And like push out of it. Yeah. Yeah. This one is just more, it's more friendly. It allows you to kind of dictate that, that magnitude of initiation. Yeah. Um, so really, really fun and engaging to be able to manipulate that ski, especially in that shorter length. Like try to pretend like it's a slalom race ski. And right. just, you know, what I love to see those slalom racers do is get out of one turn and into the next turn basically before that other turn started. Right. Like that's my mental goal yep. when I'm trying to ski on something like that. Um, but yeah, really, really fun. We talked about this with like Miris Core as well, a another shorter radius ski that it can go faster and it can go straighter, but don't expect it to adhere to that radius in a pure carve turn at those higher speeds. So yeah. that was the limitation that I found I would attribute it, some of it to it being a 171 and having it just have that shorter turn radius, but even just with that extra meter in the 179, I don't think it would have made that much of a difference for me. Um, whereas the 70 was happier to oblige rip, yeah. those higher speed, pure, more pure carves. So, yeah. you know, I would say that my experience overall on that was that it was happiest at upper mid-range and down. And then for me to push it beyond that upper mid-range, it was, it was a little dicey. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a pretty perfect transition to my experience sure. on it. And before I get into specifics, um, I, liked, I really liked what you were saying about like manipulation of turn shapes and styles. And yep. <clears throat> I can talk a little bit about my own experience doing that, um, but Something that I, it has been really interesting to me is it seems as though enough people got on this ski within the past six months that there are, um, there are already a good amount of opinions out there on the internet. Yeah. Whether you are looking in a, a forum, forum or, or <laughs> on social media or something, I've seen a, a, 
I guess, surprising amount of conversations about all these skis yep. already, um, which is really cool. Kudos to Rosignol for getting them out there. Something that I, I personally was surprised by is in everything that I've read, I can pretty confidently say that the majority of people preferred this ski over that ski and what they were pointing to or really like what they were kind of the reason why was manipulation. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> a lot of ski instructors, I'm pretty sure we're part of those conversations. <laughs> I'm like a fly on the wall in some yeah. of these internet forums, just kind of like trying to figure out who people are and what they yeah. do and what their skiing background is. But I can totally, totally understand that from a teaching perspective and from a ski instructor perspective, because it would be drastically easier to demonstrate different turn shapes on this ski than that ski, which I think is yeah. very interesting. No, and I ski bum raced on this one and loved it, yep. and I would be very hesitant to do right. the same on the 60. Right, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, so speaking more to my specific experience on it, um, obviously this is a short length for you. I think you could argue that this is the intended length for me. Yeah. Would you agree? Probably. So 171, it's a little shorter than what I would normally ski, but I think in this ski, in Rosignol's catalog or size yeah. breakdown or whatever, it's probably the length for me. Um, and I had a lot of fun putting this gear to the test. I think it was a Saturday. I think this was like bonus. We didn't have to be working that day. We just went and did it anyways. Yeah, no, I think it was. It was. Um, if not, then whatever. It was around <laughs> same period that I'm thinking of. So I skied it like I think four straight runs in a row at Stowe specifically. So forgetting about everything previously in the season and all the other experience that we've had on it. Um, and our first run was down nosedive. Yeah. I'm pretty darn sure. It might have been Perry Merrill, but in my memory, our first run was nosedive. And it is incredible. This is a phenomenon that I will probably never understand, but the steepness of nosedive does not come through on camera. No, I'll die on that hill too. That it's, <laughs> it does not look like a steep trail on video. Yeah, weirdly, like kind of yeah. in person, it also doesn't either until you start getting going. Yeah. But trust me that nosedive is a reasonably steep trail and if you've skied stow, then you know what I'm talking about. Um, it was also really firm that day. Yeah. And I admittedly had a hard time finding, I don't know if the sweet spot is the right word, but finding the right amount of edge grip for how I was trying to ski. Yeah. And it was, it was interesting. Like I, I feel like I was skiing it like I had skied the 70 with the same expectations, but exactly what you were saying about if you get into higher speeds and bigger radius turns, the ski doesn't love it. Right. It was definitely washing out in the tail. Um, even on like turn initiation, like there was a little bit of skidding, which can be nerve wracking, especially at higher speeds. Um, but lower nose dive doesn't flatten out, but it gets pretty darn mellow. Right, and a little softer too. Yeah. You know, especially on kind of that early spring. Yeah, that stuff was time. firm, yep. firm on like the top half of nose dive that run. On that lower section of nosedive, that's when it really started to sing. And yeah. I wasn't going super fast. I was making shorter radius turns, being a little bit quicker, um, partly just like skier ability. Like when I'm on like that steeper nosedive terrain, it's like scary and intimidating for me right. to make like back to back to back to back really short turns, kind of like you were talking about like a World Cup slalom right. racer, like I'm not a World Cup slalom racer. It's hard to keep your acceleration in check, I think. Yeah, or I just have... get, ti I get tired yeah. after like four turns. Yep. Um, but yeah, down there on lower nosedive, it was so fun and so rewarding. And then we were like, oh, like let's go ski lower angle stuff. Yeah. So then we went to what <clears throat> is kind of affectionately known as the slow side of Stowe, which like if you've skied Stowe, at least on the Mount Mansfield forerunner quad side of the mountain, there is a very distinct ridge. And if you go to the left of that ridge, it's getting steep yep. and very consistent fall line all the way to the bottom. If you stay to the right of that ridge, it's rolly and yep. fun and flowy and like very easy. 
and the ski did so so much better doing that than trying to like <clears throat> excuse me like rip high speed turns down nosedive. I feel I feel I I think I said this maybe on video or not, but like you were skiing that as if it were a Hero Master LT. Yeah. On nosedive. Yeah. And yeah. it didn't look like the like there was clicking going on. No, there was no clicking yeah. going on. Yeah. But once you hit slow side, it started to make a lot more sense, even from me from a visual perspective following yeah. you with the camera. Yeah. And another thing that you said on that ex that same exact day is like you're not skiing it at a 60 degree edge angle. Right. You were like, you, what, you were like what are you doing? Like this is the Forza 60. Right, like, not the need, 80. You need to ski it <laughs> at a 60 degree edge angle yeah. and that's, that's when it really came alive. Um, so I think it's an awesome ski and I think whether you're someone like me and your, maybe your instinct is to ski a little bit faster or you're somebody that like you never do that it's gonna work for kind of both of those skiers. Like you might have the experience that I did where you're like, whoa, yeah. and then you like start skiing it differently and you really have fun on it. And then for a slower speed skier, like they're just not gonna get there and it's not gonna matter. Right. So it's really good. I think there's just, a, it's, it's about expectations when you get on it. Yeah, don't expect the master or the elite. Yeah. You know, and don't expect this to even perform on the same no. plane as the 70. Yeah, which I, I give like a ton of credit to Shape. Yeah, and like interestingly, I prefer this 70 and the 173 versus the 181. Yeah, sure. You know, whereas right. that one I want to go, go longer, a little longer. Which is really probably more like indicative of which one you would buy for yourself. Right, yeah. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to talk about, again, like this, this happened on that exact day that I'm talking about, after kind of going through the paces on it and like figuring out its capabilities and like I felt like I was more aligned with the ski at that point, we went and we did the top part of nosedive again, which yeah. is just those S turns. And I skied it way slower. And I actually thought it did really well making like shorter ski yeah. turns. Yeah, it's great. Which like kind of yeah. blew my mind because like that that ski doesn't really want to leave right. just a ripping round carve. So I thought that was really cool. Maybe, I don't know if versatility is the right word because it's not really versatility for different snow conditions, but there is more versatility in how you can ski it. Yep. So I thought that was really cool. And then I also was thinking about, this was more when I was going through the footage that is gonna go along with this video, but it also makes really fun, rewarding, short carving turns on very flat terrain. So I think there's a clip of like lower, uh, lower north slope, which at that point is like, I don't know, to the skier's eye, it's practically flat. Yep. If you're going to go walk up it in the summer, you'd be like, this is steep. This is steep yeah. But in the winter, it feels yeah. flat. And it, it was really easy to get that kind of lateral acceleration or the the lateral g-forces that yeah. make skiing fun and rewarding it could do that really nicely on yeah, flatter sure. on flatter terrain so yeah th the th thing is sweet yep i mean it, and it makes sense like yeah i feel like sometimes when we do videos like this and and we say things like this uh, like point out a ski's limitations it might come across as negative but in this situation and i would say in most situations there is a really good reason for that right. and the reason for it here is that ski yeah i mean it's it's funny doing a review of a ski that's like not even the top model in its line much less the top the, model from the manufacturer yeah. yeah from the company totally yeah know? if you want to talk about like more powerful carving skis from yeah. osignal how many they're like they're, they 16 six, yeah they got a bunch like yeah excluding fis skis like yeah but everything down to like this level is for this amount of people. Right. And then you get into a 60, for, yeah, and that, and yeah. that range just really opens up. And yeah. that's kind of, that's the importance and relevance of a, of a ski like the 60 uh, within the, I would say, the community as a whole. Yeah. Um, before we came in here to film, uh, we were talking about some kind of comparison skis. Um, 
I, I, I was like Thunderbird R15 wide body, and we were both kind of like, eh, I think that's a little bit more ski than this. Yeah. And then we, you brought up Thunderbird Sport TI. Yep. And I was like, ah, oh, I feel like this is a little more ski than yeah, that. Yeah. So I think that's kind of a good way to think about it, is it sort of falls right in between two skis like that. Yep. I'm sure there are other good comparison skis out there, but I don't know. There's something about these that also feel a little bit unique. Totally. I don't know if it's just like the branding and my perception when I'm skiing them, but I do feel like they've they've captured that more visceral reaction. Yeah, they've hooked into this kind of oversized shovel. I brought up the the Dinist RM Cross 88, which yeah. is a different it's a different thing, kind of like the Mirror's Core is a different thing, but, it is but similar, similar in terms of process. that. Yeah, that oversized shovel, you know, that engagement into the turn, yeah. and then just back to that short radius, uh, you know, the pure joy of, of carving a clean turn. Yeah. So in that sense, the character is very similar, even though they're very, very different otherwise. Yeah. So fantastic job yep. from Rod Zignol. Um I don't know if we'll see a lot. I don't know. I hope so. Should. I hope you so, because I want this trend to keep going. Yeah. There's no reason that on, you know, five out of seven days here at Stowe that, we sh that that shouldn't be the majority right. of, of skis on people's feet. Right. So, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty sweet. So, that's it. That is the new Forza 60 from Rosignal. Um, once again, thanks to Rosignal for sending this yep. ski out. It was great to get back on it. I don't think this, this specific video would have been as good if we hadn't gotten on them yeah. um, later on in the spring like we did. So, yeah, very, very thankful that we had that opportunity. And as always, let us know if you have any questions about them, and we will talk to you soon. Bye.